Hello and welcome to the Wargame and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to paint the Blue Horrors from the Silvertown box set and as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. And here we have the Blue Horror I'll be painting in this tutorial and as you can see I've already primed it using the Army Painters Uniform Grey Spray Primer. This is because I find that light colour miniatures such as this one always benefit from having a grey primer. Now the first task in painting this miniature is to get the bulk of the colour applied so it's going to be all the skin areas. Now we'll be starting off with a base coat of Calador Sky followed by a layer of a Teclas Blue before finally highlighting with Lothan Blue. And then once that's completed, we'll be washing over the entirety of the miniature with a Drakenhof Nightshade. So the first step just requires us to apply the Kalidor Sky as a base coat. So you can see over as I'm applying it across the miniature, I'm applying it quite liberally, making sure I get a nice and even coverage across the surface. So I've done this by mixing in just a small amount of water here just to improve the flow. And then once this coat has dried, I'll be applying a second coat over the top which will give us a really nice and even base coat in which to build up from. With the base coat completed, the next step is to pick out some of the raised sections using a mix of Teclas Blue with Lamium Medium. And I've roughly mixed in about uh, one part Teclas Blue to one part Lamium Medium. I'm just going to be carefully picking out some of these raised sections of muscles and tentacles. And those other items that are, you can see here that make up the detail of the miniature. We want the darker blue visible in the recess, so you can see here I'm just picking out the raised sections like so. And the Lamium Medium will help to blend these two colours together nicely, so we haven't got this quite strong difference between the two colours. The next step in painting our Blue Horror is to pick out some of these edges very carefully with a fine line of Lothan Blue. You can see here I've just got a small amount of paint on the brush here, and I'm just dragging it along these raised sections. It's creating a very fine edge of paint along the tops there. And you can use this to bring out some of the detailing, especially around the face there. So for example, just on these features, just around the single eye there, and also around the mouth as well. Now the final step in painting the blue areas of the miniature is to wash over the surface with Drakenhof Nightshade. Now we've mixed in a small amount of water here, roughly two parts Drakenhof Nightshade to one part water. I'm going to be mixing this across the surface here. As you can see, it's pulling into these recesses and really bringing out the detailing on the skin and the arms. And we're going to do this across the entirety of the miniature. After painting the skin, the next step is start painting the hands of the miniature. Now we're base coating them with Sotek Green, followed by a wash of Coelia Green Shade before finally highlighting with Temple Guard Blue. So using the Sotek Green, I'll be picking out the hands here. Now what I would recommend doing as well is if you mix in a small amount of water, then you can actually start blending the Sotek Green into the darker blue that we've got down here. And then we can just paint the rest of the miniature like so. Making sure we get a nice and even coverage over the surface. Again, just mix in a small amount of water here just to thin down your paint and apply two thin coats as opposed to one thick one over the surface. So following the base coat of Sotek Green, the next step is to wash over these areas using the Quelia Green Shade. And again, I've mixed in some water, roughly one part Quelia Green Shade to one part water. And I'm just going to be applying this over the hands and slightly just down the arms as well, just to help with the blending between the two colors. This will pull into the recesses and really bring out some of the details on the fingers. Now the final step in painting the hands is to just very carefully just pick out some of these knuckles and using the Temple Guard Blue here, which wants a very slight highlight just along the edges there. Let's just really enhance these features and really lighten the colour up slightly as well. Now the next area I'll be painting are the flames emanating from the fingers. Now we're starting off with a base coat of Avalon Sunset, followed by a highlight of Fire Dragon Bright and a further highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. Then I'll be washing over the mixture with Blood Letter before finally applying some specks of a Bad and Black. So to begin with, we'll be painting over the entirety of the flames with the Avalon Sunset. Again, mixing in a small amount of water here and applying two coats, allowing the first coat to dry thoroughly before applying the second. And this will give us a really nice bright yellow base coat on which to start off from. So the next step in painting the flames is to pick out some of these uh, tendrils of fire using the Fire Dragon Bright. And what we want to do is want to pick them out from the end here. And then as we get closer to the, the source of the flames, which are these fingers here, we want to actually leave the yellow visible in the recesses. This is almost like a reverse highlight. So instead of leaving the darker sections visible in the recesses, we're instead leaving the brighter sections because this is how fire works. It gets darker as it gets cooler. And so we want the hottest part of the flames to be where they're emanating from. 
So the next step is to pick out the very tips of these flame tendrils and I'm just going to be applying just a very small amount of the Evelson Scarlet just to the tips here. And I've just mixed in uh, quite a bit of water here, so roughly one part water to one part Evelson Scarlet and this will just help us to get a nice blend between the two colours as you can see I'm doing here. Again, just make sure you pick out the tips at this stage and this will really create a nice flaming effect. Next I'll be applying a very light bloodletter glaze across the surface here and what this will do is will pull into the recesses like you can see it's doing here and give all of the areas a really nice reddish tint you can see it's, as it's doing here. Now I've mixed in roughly one part lemon medium to one part blood letter and this will just really thin down the glaze nicely and it won't be too strong when we apply it over the flames. Now the final step in painting the flames is to pick out the very very tips of these flames with a bad and black and this will just create the effect of smoke starting to form these tips. Now again mix in some water for this step. I've mixed in roughly one part of water to one part of bed and black and I just want to be very carefully, almost like a highlight, just picking out the very tips of these flame tendrils like so. With the flames completed, the next step is to start painting the teeth and also the claws on the miniature. We'll be starting off with a base coat of Rakar Flesh followed by a wash of Agrax Earthshade before finally highlighting with the Shabti Bone. Now for the base coat we'll just be painting over the entirety of these teeth here and also picking out the actual nails on the hands as well. And be very careful when you pick out these areas. Use a fine brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip there. It'll give you really good control over picking out some of these areas and allow you not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted. With the base coat completed, the next step is to wash over the teeth and also the fingernails with the Agrax of the shade. And this gives a really nice brown tone in the recesses. It really brings out the detail there, as you can see. So I'm making sure that I apply it over the surface here and don't overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. Following the Agrax Earthshade wash, the next step is to start highlighting the teeth using the Shabti Bone. I'm just going to be very carefully picking out the tips of the teeth here, leaving the darker Agrax Earthshade visible in the recesses and also the darker Rakar Flesh visible towards the bottom of the teeth. And this creates some really nice dark teeth effects. So with the teeth and claws completed, the next step is to start painting the eye on the miniature. We're starting off with a base coat of Avalon Sunset, followed by a highlight of Uriel Yellow. So as before, when we were painting Avalon Sunset, we just want to uh, mix in a small amount of water here and get a base coat over the eye. And again, use a small brush for this, as the eye is quite small. And we just want to gently apply the paint just on the eye there and gives us really nice yellow base coat in which to build up from. Following the base coat of Avalon Sunset, the next step is to apply a very small highlight of Avalon Sunset. We'll be doing this just in the very center of the eye, just applying a small dot, leaving the Avalon Sunset visible around the edges. Now with all the matte areas of the miniature completed, the next step is to start painting the silver areas. And on this miniature, it is the brace that we've got here, but on the other variant of Blue Horror, you can actually, uh, we'll be painting the, uh, the dagger on there. Now we're starting off with a base coat of Iron Breaker, followed by a glaze of Gilliman Blue, before finally highlighting with Stormhost Silver. So with the Iron Breaker, I'll just be applying this base coat on all of the silver areas. On this miniature, it's just the bracelet, but the other Blue Horror also has the dagger as well. Now, even though Iron Breaker isn't an actual base paint, if you apply two thin coats, as opposed to one thick coat out the, straight out the pot, it will cover much better. So water it down slightly, let it dry in between coats, and then make sure you apply a second one over the top. So following the base coat, we want to apply the Gilman Blue Glaze over the top there to give the metal a really magical color. Now this will be more pronounced on the blade as opposed to this bracelet that we've got here, but still we'll be applying it over the top. Now the final step in painting the silver areas is to highlight them using Stormhost Silver. Now on this bracelet here, I'll be picking out the top edge of the bracelet like so. And for that actual blade, we'll be picking out some of the raised ridges very carefully, just uh, running our brush along them like so. Be careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted. Now one of the final areas to paint on this miniature are any of the gold amulets that are hanging from the Blue Horror. Now we're starting off with a base coat of Retributor Armor, followed by a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade, before finally highlighting again with Stormhost Silver. So I'll just be applying the Retributor Armor over the amulet like so, and it is a very excellent base paint. It will cover over these uh, the grey prime that we've applied very easily. Again, just be very careful not to overspill onto the blue areas, as metallic area paints can be quite difficult to remove from matte areas. So just be careful, especially around where this tentacle is very close to the amulet. With the base coat dry, the next step is to wash over the surface with Reichland Flesh Shade, and this will give us really nice warm colour to 
the gold as you can see here and also pick out some of the detailing such as the small ray section just in the middle of the amulet there. Now the final step in painting the gold areas is to pick out the edges using Stormhost Silver again. Now this time I'll just be picking out the bulb section very carefully, just a small amount of Stormhost Silver on my brush, very lightly apply. And then towards the end of the tail here, I'm just going to be picking out some of these sections, very lightly dragging my edge of the brush just along the sides of the amulet like so. And here we have the completed blue horror, who you can see I've also based using the same techniques as I employed in my basing tutorial for Silver Tower. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future tutorials. Additionally, you can follow what I'm currently working on by checking out my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can find links to in the description below. Now, these tutorials take many hours to produce, and you can support me in making more tutorials in the future by checking out my Patreon page. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing future content. And you'll be able to find a link to my page on the screen now and also in the description below. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to check out my previous Silver Tower Pages tutorials. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.